Okay, yeah, um, my name is Will Gordon. I'm having a show here with, at the Errant Art Space with uh, Richard Pauley. And in this main gallery is uh, mostly Richard's work uh, of like maybe two or three months. Uh, and it's pretty amazing amount and quality as well. Um, he, uh, he and I decided to have a joint show and at Richard's suggestion uh, we would uh, use just white. Objects, obviously, uh, that we, he and I both work in found object and uh, repurposed materials. Um, and so it started off as a, for myself as a challenge. Richard had been inspired by a show that was in the Tate Modern some time ago by uh, Cy Twombly, who made it all white. And so for my part on the white aspect of it was I, I thought straight away about Robert Rauschenberg, one of my inspirers, and John Cage, another one, who inspired one another, uh, one with sound and the other with uh, white paintings. And uh, in, that, uh, in that collaboration of their work, it, was, it came out that uh, slowing down and being able to be more aware of sound, uh, light, uh, space, uh, a range of uh, words, you know, just, just that sort of uh, uh, free association would, uh, would help people perhaps to be more aware. So, so Richard's work here, um, very much he, he considers himself here a cartoonist. And I have to say that all of the pieces are um, humorous, Especially, you know, when you read the captions, and uh, and especially because of the, the wide-ranging uh, topics that he talks about, very surprising, and yet uh, very alive. Each piece, and and some of them in groups, as in as in this group here, the Boneyard Five, and so straight away they're recognisable as uh, clogs and bones, and uh, there's some toys, uh, some, yeah, a few recognizable objects, but then at the same time, being coated with white, we tend to uh, leave the original um, recognition or meaning of the, of the object, and uh, it can transform into uh, a dream. <laughs> yeah. Um, there's some other pieces here uh, that he feels uh, quite significant uh, strength. I'd like to point this one out. This one is called A Man Holding a Sign of a Man Holding a Sign During a Blizzard. And of course, you know, Richard driving around town finds this sign. They're all over the place, you know, I don't know what's happening to City Hall, but they're, they're probably just, uh, you know, got surplus signs that they can leave around. And so Richard snagged this one, and then this is some other piece that he's just made a, a little, uh, a, a character, a little figure. So it's a man holding a sign, hold, <laughs> of a man holding a sign in a blizzard. And of course, again, used to these are quite pain. Uh, anyway, Humorous and um, what would you call it? Uh, insightful for sure. Um, I would say, yeah, it just says what it says. Uh, the other two pieces I would really like to point out uh, are the two bishops. You've got two bishops here in the open doorway, <laughs> and one, this particular piece is called Bishop off his rocker, catching fallen souls. So there's a rocking chair there. Obviously this is an oar from a rowing, rowing boat. And you know, an old clock upside down that certainly looks like somebody's, uh, uh, yeah, well, he's up there anyway, the bishop. And the fallen soul has got a, a holy, <laughs> I didn't realize that, a holy parachute. And so here's this fallen soul trying to be saved by the bishop. The other bishop is uh, Bishop Birdbrain, and there's a, quite a, a sort of a, maybe a humorous part of uh, the, the bird itself. I mean, there's some references to the bird, 
uh, you know, feather, uh, duck's head coming out of his mouth. There's a bird up on top as well. It just, just fitted into the gallery. I don't know if he measured them before he made them. <laughs> but they certainly just came in here and commanded the space. Um, so, uh, yeah, that's another piece of what we say, satire, perhaps. Let's put it that way. And then, of course, there's a reference to the narcissist here. Uh, Siddhartha awakening to contemplate the idea of narcissism. <laughs> yeah, he, he's written, uh, he's been reading Siddhartha again this, uh, this last summer, you know, Herman Hesse's, uh, well, one of his masterpieces. And so um, this is the reference that comes out. Another one here about Siddhartha, he's using the, uh, the, the cigarette package and uh, fire starters, if you like. Siddhartha awakening to find a way to break free from the prison of aestheticism. <laughs> and again, there's another uh, satire, if you like, or social comment or art comment, I don't know, whatever it is. But, but anyway, it's not taking it too seriously, and that's probably a smart move. <laughs> Got another one over there in the corner. This piece is called One-Eyed Backyard Patio Man Snacking on One-Eyed Backyard Party Frog While Watching Sea Hunt. I like the, the reference to backyard, you know, there's the wicker furniture there and there's <laughs> and then the, the, the clicker, you know, the TV clicker too, they're watching. <laughs> yeah. I, I have one piece uh, of mine in, the, in, the, uh, in this gallery here, which is uh, this piece here called Bogle, and it's a reference to my upbringing uh, on a Scottish farm, where the Tatty Bogle, and these are well, they were white potatoes, but they're turning green now. The, the show is going on. Um, so the uh, Tatty Bogle is a potato ghost. It's actually a scarecrow. But the Bogle is also just a ghost, which can be called a ghost. Which, so then the, the, the idea of white uh, certainly comes to mind, you know, with the ghost. But then the earth um, and... Uh, it's got two sides to it. Uh, it's got the uh, astronaut side here, and it's got the earthbound side here. There's two faces. There's a, a sort of a bird-like face, and then there's a human face, which is actually coming. You have to kind of look down at it. But, um, and it's, uh, yeah, it's about, about the earth. Okay, so uh, in this uh, uh, smaller uh, gallery, uh, I've created a, a sort of an installation of sorts uh, relating to the film uh, 2001, uh, A Space Odyssey uh, by Stanley Kubrick. I forget what year it was made, but anyway, it uh, doesn't matter. Um, and then in, uh, in that film, the, the, it starts with uh, some apes, you know, maybe man, the original man. Um, wailing away on a, with a bone on something, you know, that, that's a reference to the, uh, the original uh, tool or the original weapon, which I've got a sort of a, a, a range of bones here that are representing that start of that film. And, uh, and then the reference here to dinosaurs and passage of whatever, just, just movement, that's what it is. And, uh, uh, you know, moving on to this other piece, which is a sort of a spaceship looking thing, uh, but it's actually called uh, White Wizard. And again, that's that uh, reference to uh, higher intelligence, where the cone is a sort of a, a symbol of, uh, in some uh, uh, circles, um, a symbol of uh, intelligence, or at least to acquire more intelligence. The dunce's cap is one reference. 
And so, uh, moving on in the movie, uh, 2001 uh, Space Odyssey, uh, is uh, Dr. Dave Bowman, uh, Dr. Dave, where he actually um, is up in a spacecraft with a few other astronauts in the film, and uh, later on in the film, and uh, HAL is uh, basically the HAL 900, I forget what it is, he's got a new model of uh, artificial intelligence. And Hal is up there, you know, running the show, and actually takes a bit too much uh, power <laughs> in his hands and starts popping off some of these uh, other astronauts. And Dave is the last man standing, and uh, it tumbles that it's Hal that's, you know, pulling the plug on these astronauts. So uh, at one point, Dave said, right, you know, Hal, I don't need you, and starts pulling these Hal's plugs, and, and Hal then so humorously says, I really think you should reconsider, Dave. You're making a big mistake, Dave. And so goes on and on. And how it re re reverts back to his childhood by singing Daisy, Daisy, give me your answer, do. Anyway, here's how, um, here's Dave up in the floating in space with his aura around him, whatever. And, you know, the, the, it's just empty water bottles, basically. That's what I've just uh, bound together to make it look like an astronaut floating. And this is Terrestrial Dave, uh, you know, standing there with his uh, sad looking uh, aura, <laughs> just cut out cardboard and chip wrappers, that's what it's made of. But when I made that piece, uh, I thought, hey, just a minute, it reminded me of the small sculpture, the Venus of Willendorf, which uh, 30,000 years it was, it was discovered not too long ago, but 30, it dated 30,000 years as a fertility object. It's only a few couple of inches long, that tall bit. But, but here it is, the fertility of the start of the human journey, if you like. Um, and then there's Dave, 2001. So you just wonder how, you know, how far we've come, you know, because we, we're still using tools and weapons, you know, to wail on each other. Um, so what's changed? I don't think much. So. Um, Anyway, that, that's all that just came by accident, I guess, but uh, I have these questions. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so the, the other part, maybe I did mention about um, uh, Rauschenberg, uh, one of my inspirers, and John Cage, another uh, inspirer of mine. Um, they both, in the early 50s, uh, I say collaborated or perhaps influenced one another by Rauschenberg making these white paintings, just household paint, roll it on to these panels, you know, canvases, put on the wall four or five panels, uh, and he said it's just about uh, the viewer's awareness. And, uh, and so that even, you know, in a white gallery space with white paintings, uh, the viewer could act, if the viewer was particularly aware, would be able to know how many people are in the room or in the space, what the weather's like outside, and what time of day it is. So there was that sort of reference to outside of reality, whatever. The other part, of course, is uh, John Cage's very famous uh, four minutes and 33 seconds, where uh, there's videos of this particular, not maybe the original uh, performance, but the piano, there's a piano on the stage, audience in the audience spaces, and the piano, pianist comes in, um, sits on the stool, uh, stopwatch, opens the lid, and starts the stopwatch, and then sits for, you know, the first movement. And nothing happens except sound. And it's not the sound that the audience have come to hear, they're, they're, but they're hearing, you know, what's going on outside the hall, or what's going on inside the hall. And so, next movement, same thing, stopwatch, you know. Overall, the last movement, by this time, people are getting pissed off and they're just so right, I'm out of here. And not all of them, but some of them are pretty uncomfortable and, and confused and whatever. So, Cage was asked at the end, you know, so what do you think happened there? He said, well, you know, some of them didn't get it. it, it because there is no such thing as silence. And so when you're aware of the, the space that you're in and you're aware of, you know, hearing traffic outside or 
you know, birds chirping or wind or rain or, or, or people fidgeting in their seats and the chip wrappers or whatever. Um, yeah, that, that's, that's all part of what, what sound is. And of course, since then, as a lot of people have used, found sound and found words and found objects. Well, the found object was way back before that. But anyway, it, it was about a, an offering from Rauschenberg and uh, Cage to, to encourage people to slow down and use their, perhaps, uh, awareness, uh, other senses that are part of the human condition. So, uh, yeah. So white certainly helps with that kind of slowing down, you know?